Hey guys, welcome back to part 8 of my 3D modeling tutorial for 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to continue the block out of the M4A1 assault rifle by building custom parts and uh, further editing some, some of the shapes that we've already created. Um, I really want to build a custom handguard here today and um, maybe block out like a laser sight and a flashlight. Um, I also was thinking about adding a silencer to this, so um, I'm just going to jump right into the handguard here at first. And the cylinder that we had created before, I'm just going to convert that to an editable poly, and I will ring that, and connect it so I can cut it in half, and we'll just get going on building the custom piece. Alright, so I've decided I'm going to build something close to the um, um, this case V handguard here, something like that. So I, I don't want to make it entirely the same, I just want to kind of base it on that because I really like the look and the shape of it. So I'm just going to move into creating it kind of how I see it. And what I want here is, I just want this line close to the inside edge of that delta ring there. And also, I want the um, this line that I just shifted here to be a little bit further inward or closer to the Y origin than, um, than the rail mount top that we have created on the upper receiver there. And then next, I'm going to select these vertex points. Scale those outward a little, close to the inside edge of the delta ring once again, and do the same thing with the bottom, just bring it down a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to create some new segments here. There we go. That should be good. Um, I'm going to cu cut this thing in half here. And one thing I want to do really quick is um, just get rid of these extra faces and also throw smoothing groups onto the different surfaces. So what I'm going to do is just select the flat surfaces or the ones that are at 90 degree angles to one another. And um, I'm going to give them smoothing group 1. Then all the angled surfaces, I'm just going to give those smoothing group 2 and take whatever other smoothing groups were on those off. So, oops. Now what I want to do is, since I've already created the smoothing groups, I'm going to use a shell modifier and it's going to preserve the information of smoothing groups um, and transfer that to the inside of our shape so we get a little bit of thickness there. So I'm going to the modifier list and I'm going to select the shell modifier and um, it's set to the exact specifications that I've already wanted. Um, yours is probably going to say outer amount one first. Um, set it to whatever you want or however you however you like the, the hand guard on your weapon to look. Um, this is just going to work for me. I just want to make sure that two things are checked. I want to make sure bevel edges is checked and that straightened corners is checked. And that's very important because if you don't have straightened corners checked, you'll get um, some really funky um, angled lines and it's just not going to look really clean. Um, it, it just preserves the geometry better in my opinion. So if I just check straightened corners, it fixes all my problems except for this one vertex and I can fix that in a split second. So, I'm just going to select this, copy the Y value, take an edge constraint, bring that close in, and then paste. There we go. And now that that's fixed, I can create the smoothing groups for the insides, um, or pretty much like the connecting polygons for the inside and the outside faces. So first I'm going to delete these because we're going to have a symmetry modifier working on those edges and we don't want polygons there. And then I'm going to give smoothing group 3 to that and turn this one to smoothing group 4. The 
this one's going to be 3, this one's going to be 4, and 3, and 4, and 3. All right, and I think that whole side is 3. Um, and the reason I gave a different smoothing group to the center one here is because I actually want to move these inward a little bit. So now I have something kind of like this, and now I'm going to use a symmetry modifier to just bring it all together. Oop, wrong one. Symmetry. And I see something funny is going on here. It looks like there's an angle to this symmetry modifier. I'm going to delete that really quick. And, uh... Yep, it looks like there's a 22.5 degree angle there because when I first created the cylinder, I uh, rotated it to get the flat sides facing upward and and um, on, on a vertical and horizontal axis so they would be perfectly even. And uh, I guess all I have to do is just go to the Utilities panel, Reset X Form, I'll Reset Selected. We'll go back to the Modify panel and then you'll see the X Form modifier. I'll just convert Editable Poly and now it should be fixed. So when I go back to the modifier list and use a symmetry modifier, all I have to do is change the axis. And there we go. And that worked perfect for us. Just fixed all the, the errors. So now I'm going to unhide all and check out my new hand guard. Turn on shadows by pressing Shift F3. Get a much better feel for how everything looks. Turn those off again while I'm working. And um, now I'm going to move on to the barrel. Um, I want to create this profile barrel. That means I have to kind of create this flash suppressor that's on the front here. And I'm just going to do that by just making some more lines. And I'll chamfer that last line that I put there in the center. I will turn that into a face selection actually and I will bevel by local norm actually I think I might just extrude there we go and then I will scale those inward a little and the reason I did extrude is because now that's the exact same thickness as this piece and the other piece and it just preserved the extrusion options that I used earlier to create those other two um, pieces there. All right. Convert to face and I'll extrude one more time. loop that and just kind of move it in a little bit just to get an angle here. Alright. Um, now what we're going to do is turn our barrel hollow. And uh, I don't know if I've already shown this or not. But uh, I'm just going to start from how we normally work with a basic cylinder. I'm just going to select the tip segment on the, uh, the barrel that we created here and I'm going to select inset. I'm actually going to use the inset options. I think setting it to um, exactly one as an inset is perfect for me. And I'm going to extrude inward. inset one more time and extrude one more time alright now I'm gonna hide unselected 
I'm going to bring this back to the exact same point here. I want to just copy the x value. There we go. Bring that together. Select these two outlines and then bridge them. And there we go. Now we've got a solid barrel piece and it's hollow. And now I can create a silencer. So what I'm going to do is actually take the barrel shape here and I'm going to shift oops got an extra selection there that I didn't want. I'm going to shift and drag that. I want to detach it to its own object, and we're going to call it Suppressor. Alright, that looks good. I'm going to select my Suppressor object now. Just kind of edit the lines a little bit, move everything into place. Alright. Scale that outward. And um, I'm actually going to just have the uh, barrel and my suppressor object showing. Looks like I need to scale them up just a little bit more. I just want them to fit inside of that um, suppressor piece at the front, the flash suppressor, I guess. So, all right, there we go, good enough. Time to connect that. And we'll bring it pretty close to the tip of the barrel there. Then it's time to extrude. And that's a bit too much. I think I'm going to go with something kind of like that. I didn't want to extrude all of those. Just this segment there. And I didn't want to select the inside faces either, so I guess we had all kinds of problems. Alright. Really not having any luck here today. All right, just gonna do this and maybe this. And I'll just take this, turn it to face mode, and there we go. Something kind of like that. I think I'll just bring this line inward. I just kind of want this a little bit overlapping with the flash suppressor um, to kind of make it further look like the um, the suppressor is kind of attached to the front end of our rifle there or 
the barrel. I think I might make this a little bit wider as well. Oops, loop. Convert to no. Just scale it outward like that. Something kind of like that. And I think I might just chamfer this edge here at the front. Alright. And now that I kind of have a, a cylinder or a silencer here, I'm just going to move on. Um, I'm, later on I'm just going to set some smoothing groups, but I really don't think I have to show that to you guys. Um, by this point you guys should have a grasp on using smoothing groups and how you want um, the transitions of smooth surface to another smooth surface to go. Um, so at that I'm just gonna leave the tutorial off for today. I'm just gonna save out my file so don't forget to do that yourself and uh, I'll see you guys back for the next tutorial.